Coming to you from our GIS studios, I am Davina Lee and this is your Midday News Brief. In the span of just two weeks, the Honorable Leonard spider Montchut, Member of Parliament for Grosile and Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, opened five ICT centers in the communities of Labon, De Ramo, La Fee, Riviermita and Grand Rivier. According to the minister, he looks forward to our youth utilizing those centers, not only for recreation, but also to access educational and entrepreneurial opportunities. St. Lucia has broken its 2017 tourism records, welcoming 1,218,294 visitors in 2018. Crews, yachting, and stayover arrivals combined have contributed to a 10.2% increase in travelers to the destination. Crews increased by 13.6%, yachting is up 25.9%, and stayover arrivals increased by 2.2%. On Wednesday, January 23, 2019, the Department of Infrastructure will officially sign contracts and launch the Millennium Highway and West Coast Roads upgrading project. This signals immediate commencement of work and will inject approximately $115 million into the local economy. Work will include the complete rehabilitation of the Millennium Highway, reconstruction of the West Coast roads from Cul-de-Sac to Soufre, design for the construction of the new Ancillary Bridge, and a robust island-wide road safety program. This work will be done with grant funding from the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Fund, UKCIF. The Honorable Herod Stanislas, Member of Parliament for Soufre and Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, recently shed plans for the Soufre Farmers Market. In accordance with the government's policy of no sector left behind, a permanent sheltered facility on Old Trafford will be constructed to create a safer and less restrictive atmosphere for the town's produce vendors to conduct business. The facility will accommodate weekday and Saturday vendors. Construction will commence in the coming weeks. The government of St. Lucia has tasked the National Integrated Planning and Program Unit, NIP, in the Ministry of Finance in collaboration with the United Nations Office for Project Services, UNOPS, to articulate Acastria's Vision 2030 Redevelopment Plan. Stakeholder consultations have been integral to the development of this plan, with the aim of gathering suggestions from a wide cross-section of the St. Lucian society. The aim is to make Castries more resilient to climate change by aligning the city to some of the international conventions government has signed on to, dealing with sustainable cities and communities, compact mixed-use development, whilst making the city more socially inclusive. Honestly, the way that Cashies is right now, it's not very conducive to pedestrians. There's a lot of traffic, it's very polluted, and there's no green spaces. I, I would honestly like to see more green spaces in Cashies, spaces where you can just sit, because as it is right now, yes, we have new stores and new buildings coming up, and it's being modernized in a way, but the way that they're doing it, it's not thinking about the people aspect. Well, the shops and businesses seem more akin to that of a small town than a city. I think they are in areas like Grosile, there are bigger shops, bigger malls, and things like that. At this one, it's looking like Grosile is more of a capital than Castries. The NIP director stated that as the planning phase moves ahead, Consultations are scheduled to take place with residents and landowners from Castries to facilitate their direct feedback on the Castries Vision 2030 project. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Unit, Glenn Simon reporting. Thank you, Glenn, for that report. Join us later on NTN for Nation Beat, where we bring you today's top stories. Thanks for watching.